All right, and welcome everybody in Twitch chat and on YouTube for our next deck, Teamer Vanifar. So this is a donation deck where we are going to be um, using Prime Speaker Vanifar to kind of chain our creatures and uh, have all these awesome, sweet, uh, expensive creatures get them into play. So we have a lot of acceleration to help us there. We have uh, Llanowar Elves and Incubation Druid, which is pretty normal for a lot of my decks. I like those two a whole lot. But then we also even have Druid of the Cowl. Just two of those, though. So we really want to make sure we can get Prime Speaker Vanifar out early. Um, to kind of help with uh, Vanifar, also we have Rhythm of the Wild that gets to give it haste uh, with the Riot, so we can activate Vanifar immediately and start to chain our creatures together. So this is going to be pretty interesting. I like um, Vanifar, and I, I'm pretty excited to play all these Rhythm of the Wilds to go along with it. See how that works out. Um, and Rekindling Phoenix is a great card to be able to uh, sacrifice to get a 5-drop, and then it comes back and everything like that. Uh, so yeah, like this, this looks pretty exciting. Pretty excited to play this. I don't know if I can say that exciting word enough, I guess. I said it a lot. Um, yeah, we don't even have Act of Treason. Act of Treason, I guess, would be kind of cool. Take their thing, sack it. I don't know. Let's go. So how does Teamer Vanifar stack up? I guess we had a prize from earlier. Oh, that's right. The, the screen froze earlier with that. All right. 1,000 gold. Enter. Five wins, two losses. What's going to happen first? What what kind of cards do you sideboard in against mono blue? You want um you want your curve to be low um, against mono blue, just kind of in general. You want cheap removal. Captain with the Twitch Prime sub, sub number 10. So we're going to be cracking open a pack after this one. Thanks, Captain. Um, Mono Blue is really good at, you know, countering spells, interacting on the stack. So the, the more expensive your cards are, the better it is for Mono Blue. So you want, like, you want cheap, even just cheap threats that are attacking them, putting pressure on their life total. Uh, where they have to, like, put things on the battlefield and they can't just hold up mana all the time. Yeah, I guess the Act of Treason with legs could possibly work here, I suppose. Yeah, Control's kind of a bad... Well, Control may be a bad matchup for us, but I like having having the Rhythm of the, the, rhythm of the Wild uh, for sure. Doesn't mean that's going to resolve, but... How do we make this Rhythm of the Wild resolve? I guess we can't. Yeah, that's the thing. If I just cast Rhythm, it just goes into that Absorb. So now they use their Absorb. Hope they don't have a second Absorb. That's what we're hoping here. Hoping they don't have a second Absorb. Please don't have a second one. Uh. Dilt. Oh, right, maybe I. So pace. if I just play Vanifar that turn. I would have just played Vanifar the previous turn. I'm getting too old. Hmm. Get that countered. You know what? <laughs> they I'm always not have yet. everything. Yeah.
And this extra mana from Teferi, this is like the problem with the extra mana from Teferi. They get they get to for with five lands, they get to wrath our board and have no counter spell. <laughs> Both of those. And there goes the Dream Eater. And we're dead. Okay. The big card that for us that's really important is Rhythm of the Wild. It was countered last time. We need it to resolve. No. No. Um... So what are we taking out? We're taking out Palaka Worm. Like, do I just take out Vanifar? This may be just a time to take out Vanifar. At 23 lands, I have to be pretty worried about um, the top end. I have to be kind of worried about just like you know playing all of our stuff. So I can't just I can't just cut all my mana creatures. <laughs> you got it in for no. Yep, it's a maple and brown sugar pop tart. Need to eat, eat something, get a little, little energy. Just a little bit. All right, so we'll see if they have Kai's Wrath on turn four or not. Looks like a Mortify, probably. I'll just let that happen. I'm gonna go ahead and play Rekindling Link Phoenix while they're tapped out. Because, you know, Kaya's Wrath, uh, it doesn't really matter with Phoenix. It'll come back. Alright. Got that game. So they didn't have any wrath effect. If I use dual color lands in a deck, do I need as many lands in the deck? Yes. Yeah. Um... Other questions, what's prediction for what deck will win this weekend? I mean, I think it, I think, um, I'm gonna guess 
Hmm. What I think we'll win this weekend. Sultai is kind of the easiest, the easy choice. But I think it's going to be, um, I'm going to call Esper Control. I think Esper Control is going to have a good weekend for some reason. Rhythm of the Wild is pretty nice here. Get to uh, have other creatures have Riot. And then it also kind of works out of like keeping Negate available. These adventurous impulses aren't nearly as good um, after sideboarding when we have, like, you know, much spells in our deck. But, oh well. So with the opponent um, just using the Mortify on the, the Phoenix, that's basically like draw a card. You know, that's basically like our opponent casting like an Adventurous Impulse on our deck for like that three mana. I'm not going to counter that. They have like some really powerful cards um, that I'd rather counter. You know, like Teferi, Kai's Wrath, that kind of stuff. Much rather counter the Kai's Wrath. Do they have Spell Pierce also? Wow. Okay. Well, they're down to two cards. We have a Rhythm of the Wild in play. That's kind of cool. They have a Search for his Kanto. Sit this one out. We need to move quickly. Yeah, that was that was my spell pierce, because they don't have yeah, they don't have spell pierce, I don't think. That was that was my my spell pierce in there. Hey, that was uncalled for. No, we're not facing a Nexus deck. This is just Esper Control. Hurry!
This is hardly my worst defeat. All right, we got to ferry out of here. That's good news. Yeah, because I had like I let the mortify resolve because we had the counter spell for the Kaya's wrath. Um, but then, but then them getting our spell pierce. Yeah, that was a huge bummer. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Sorry. Um, no, it's not very likely we can win this, but I guess it's possible. But certainly not likely. Carnage Tyrant would be a great draw, like Hasty Carnage Tyrant. Um, Alright, so Land of War Elf, I'm just going to uh, just make it a 2-2. You know, it doesn't need to have haste. They found a Mortify for a Rhythm of the Wild, though. So, I think that will probably do it. No, Ascanta is just a messed up card. I mean, I, I mean we can still draw Carnage Tyrant. And our opponent not have an answer for it, I suppose. Already played a couple Kaya's Wraths. Let's slow this down. Let's skip to the good part. There's only one there's only one tyrant in our deck, I think. Maybe there's two, but I think there's only one. It's kind of, yeah, Teferi plus Escanta is, is messed up. I mean, it's just Teferi plus everything. You know, Teferi plus Nexus, Teferi plus anything. Yeah, Bant Flash is up on Stream Decker. Absolutely. It's from, it's not like from today. Cause, uh, use the same list I used a couple days ago. So you have to scroll through a couple days. Or like, you know, it's like the... 5th through 10th deck or something like that on there. Yeah, we got some Teamer Pod. Got the old, the old turn 3 Rekindling Phoenix. That's, that's pretty nice.
Yeah, the spell pierce. That was a crucial moment for sure. Yep. Yep. Is this a mirror match? We may have a mirror match on our hands. Stony strength, really? Shark toe crab. Yeah, it looks like our opponent's oozing for a bruising right about now. Alright, so they can tap my Phoenix. That's a card I wanted to see. We can go get another Biogenic who's next turn with this help of this Rekindling Phoenix. I guess we have to worry about not dying. That's a thing. All right, what do I have to... Sure. Uh, it gets a counter, so it gets to tap something. Mucky. I just, I don't think I can take the six. I unfortunately have to trade off this Biogenicus. Okay, so we have Ravager Worm. They could come in and kill a Krasis. Oh, we don't we don't have the Biogenic Goose to sacrifice anymore. Never mind, we gotta sack a Phoenix to go get her. Hmm. I don't really want to sack a Phoenix though. Oh, there we go. So Hmm. Alright, these are these are my two options. Playing Sailor and having Sailor go get an, another Rekindling Phoenix. Alright, so we can turn we can turn Sailor into a Rekindling Phoenix. Or I can play Biogenic Ooze. Biogenic Ooze turn into Um Ravager Worm. Ravager Worm eat the Krasis. We can kill this 5-5 five, five Krasis. But then we don't have a Biogenic Ooze. A Biogenic Ooze is kind of cool. And then I don't have any more Biogenic Oozes to go get. I kind of think I just go get another Phoenix. Alright, so let's... Incubation Druid... So we can have more mana, so like we can play Biogenic Ooze and make a token and stuff.
More shark toe crabs. Card's being mean. Yeah, the Phoenix will come back your next upkeep, yes. You'll still get the token. So we're down to six. Yeah, Siege Gang is the only five that's left. I have two Siege Gangs left. All right, we'll go left to right. Um... Alright, so I'm gonna sack the Incubation Druid to go get a three. And I want that three mana card to be this mirror image. I'm gonna copy the Biogenic Ooze and make another Ooze. Because now with I think we're okay in the air right now, for right now. I do need to sack like one of these Biogenic Oozes next turn though. I need to start going up the chain. I, I especially do now. They only did it for six, huh? Boy's about to get the Nickelodeon treatment. <laughs> so much using. Well, bad news is I cannot cast this Palaka Worm. That was the card that I kind of want to move towards. Um, ugh. I think I want to keep the Palaka Worm in my deck. I know I could pay two life and make a new ooze. I, I think I'm not at a life total to want to do that though. All right, so we're gonna have a Ravager Worm kill this 5-5 Krasis.
And so now, next turn, I'll sack the Ravager Worm and go get Palaka Worm. See, my opponent has like a sleep. They're just saying good game. Maybe they just have sleep. Like, I don't know why they're saying good game right now. We'll see. That'll do it. Madonna's climb is messed up. Oh, that's not gonna do it. They me opponent messed up. They didn't just double the hy hydroid crisis. We're still alive. All they had to do is double the hydroid crisis. Because no, no trample, they discarded Zagana earlier. Zagana would have gave a trample. Oh. They had Zagana. Kind of messed that up. Alright, going right to left this time. Going right to left strat. New strat. Left to right strat earlier. Didn't help us too much. Let's go right to left strat. Gotta switch up your strat sometime. Yeah, is there anything better I can do than just get than just get Palaka Worm? I think there's something I can... I think I can do Siege King. I think Siege King's gonna... I don't have another Ravager, no. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get Siege King with the Phoenix, and I'm gonna shoot. have Goblin shoot the Zagana. So I won't attack with anything else, though. Nah, we're not going to win if we just swing for the fences here. And Dream Eater is not going to not going to help us. Like our only options are like Dream Eater, Palaka Worm, and Siege Gang. I don't think Palaka Worm saves us. So this is going to make sure they don't have Trample now. Now they don't have trample, so I can block with their Kindling Phoenix. You can move the st you can move the stack with the air. There's an arrow like my camera's blocking an arrow, but you can move the arrow if, if you know things get stuck. All right, we could could lose here. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess that they had two removal spells. So they have to have a removal spell that costs like two or less. Okay, that's not a removal spell. All right, if I throw my last goblin at the branch walker, they have four blockers. Four blockers block uh, seven and these. So we get to do 11, 17, uh, 18, 19, 20, 24. We get to do 24 damage. They're at 27. One away from lethal. Because then I can also throw Siege Gang and make and for two more. I'll still just throw this, throw this thing. Oh, I didn't, I didn't count the egg. We're gonna get another Rekindly Phoenix back, so we're gonna have another four. So no, we're gonna have lethal. Is that that's gonna turn to another four damage? So. All right. What a game. Ugh. <laughs> well, sometimes math is for attackers. I was doing math because we had to figure if we need to, to block. So uh, if we need to, to hold back, if we couldn't just swing out. Because that's the thing. If I just swung out and we didn't have lethal, we were dead on the way back. So. Um, I'm not sure if I need anything. Like, Lava Coil is, like, a card that is okay. Um, a lot of their things that game, like, Co Coil wouldn't have really helped us with. Whoops. I meant to click over here. Yeah, just Tyrant. We play Vivian for their crisis. That could certainly matter. Yeah, climb is. Adon's climb is like the scariest card that's gonna kill us. I guess coil for Zagana is a thing. Do these sailor remains really matter? I think I want to keep my game my game one game plan honestly in this matchup. I think I just want to try to do my thing as best as I can, and uh, hope it's better than what my opponent's doing. Well, this is good. Turn two rhythm, and then we can start playing these druids with counters. They can add just a ridiculous amount of mana. We have turn three Vanifar, which I guess I'm just going to go ahead and cast. Disdainful Stroke. Disdainful Stroke. Do it. Counter it. Counter it. Counter it. Nailed it. So good job, Rhythm of the Wild. Um, I think... I think that's a good play by the opponent anyway, with it being Essence Captor. Like, that Essence Captor isn't going to do anything else. Uh, so they got a counter on their Incubation Druid to allow them to have a lot more mana. So honestly, that's what our opponent was supposed to do there. 
we just had the like disdainful stroke would have been a, a worse card for them to play but essence capture that's certainly a, a fine card to play We're going to go get Ravager Worm. Rhythm can make the Ravager Worm a 6-7. So we go 1-1 one, one counter, 1-1 one, one counter. It's a 6-7. Six, six, Fight the Krasis, which is a 6-6. Six, six. Do I have Rex Age on my sideboard that I just didn't bring in? Because if so, that's silly. Yeah, I'd say that was a pretty good turn four for us. I'd say we've had a pretty good four. We've had four turns so far. I'd say they've been pretty good. I'd say they've been pretty good. All right, let's do the same thing again. Incubation Druid. We can go get Mirror Image. Copy the Ravager Worm. Make it a 6-7. Chomp on this Krasis. Ooze. Tapped out. Whose line is it anyway? That was a pretty good turn five. I'd say we've had five pretty good turns so far. Honestly, I don't think our deck does anything better than what we've done these five turns. I, I don't think our turn our five turns could get any better. <laughs> yeah, like turn one elf, turn two rhythm, turn three speaker, and then... Yeah, turn four Siege Gang plus Ravager Worm. And then five, like another Ravager Worm and a Biogenic Ooze. Alright, well they're tapping our stuff. So that's a problem. Thankfully Shark to Crab is not lethal next turn yet. Yeah, Shark to, Shark to Crab's getting things done here. Um, basically, can our opponent pump this Shark to Crab's power one more? That's the game now. We could, you know, we can certainly lose this. So it's 14 power in the air next turn. I 
if they have another like one of those stony strengths. If not, you know, we should have lethal. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, sec yeah, second climb, stony strength, anything like that. If they could just all they have to do is pump the shark to shark to crab's power one time. Well, that's good. That's good. Oh, they messed up. They just play the climb first. You make it an 8, and then 8 times 2 is 16. Oh, they have enough mana, right, because Incubation Druid. Right, Incubation Druid gives them the mana, though, so they're good. So 15 times 2 is 30. 30 is more than 16. Nothing's fine, I'm done. Hmm. Our deck really could not do any better than that. The problem. Hadana's Climb is certainly a problem. Is Rexage going to actually blow up Hadana's Climb? I don't know. Let's just get it in the deck over one of these Sailor Means. Sailor Means don't really matter too much. Let's just have one of those in here. Um... Yeah, it's, yeah, Hada yeah. Worm can blow up the other, the other part of Hadana's climb, whatever it is, Temple of, or whatever, whatever it's called. The land. I haven't like wanted Dream Eater, kind of ever. I wonder if I should take out Dream Eater, for Lava Coil. Yeah, Shark to Crab was awesome. It's been really good. Yeah, that's what I want Coil for is Druid. The Crabs already get too big, but the Druids, I want these four. How many do I play, though? I guess I could play four. I guess I can cut Dream Eater, cut a Sailor, cut the two Druid of the Cowls. Play first. Mm. Hopefully this Adventurous Impulse finds us a one or a two mana creature to play on turn two. That's what I'm hoping. Land or Elf. Perfect. That'll do. Done. Now we have Vanifar next turn. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Vivian can destroy um, enchantments. Alright, no essence capture. Uh, sorry, Brian. Ooze time. Ooze line is it anyway? Mm -hmm. All right, game three. Shark to crab. Coming in. <laughs> well, that stands for a donation deck. So. 
a deck that somebody donated to see play. Hmm. What am I sacking? Yeah, I could turn the elf into a druid. Nah, I'm gonna turn this into Siege King. Wish I had another Biogenic Goose to get here. But I think we're doing okay. They spend their four mana just doing the, the shark to crab thing. That's not a very good turn for them. All right, got the match. Our deck looked real impressive, all those games. All three games, our deck did a lot of really cool things. We had Vanifar out early and often. Those are some good games right there. All right, so we are one and one. So much for looking good for the deck. Boros Guildgate. Is this like Gates? Gates? They just have that for like an angel and. Or is this like Boros Aggro? Who knows? Could be either one. Ah, looks like actual Gates. Which again, against having haste against Gates Ablaze, pretty important. So much for haste. <laughs> I feel like Gates Ablaze is good against our deck. Yeah, opponent, our opponent's last deck was pretty good. Hey, what's up, Crazy? It's going good. I don't know why I just did that attack. That was a brain fart. That was a bad attack. Ugh. Gates of Blaze was only going to do three damage, so we were actually going to be able to keep our creature alive through Gates of Blaze there. Um, of course, they could just have a gate to play. Yeah, Drew to the Cow could have been a mirror image the, the next turn. I messed that one up. Kind of have nothing going on. I 
And with Guild Summit, our opponent's going to just draw a whole lot of cards. Enclave Tribunal? Looks like we're gonna need a... Um... So if I went with a 1-1 one -one counter on Incubation Druid, then I could not add another 1-1 one -one counter. Oh, I didn't need to I didn't need to actually pay 2 life because the haste... Oh, I could actually tap that to add the mana. So I, didn't, I just paid 2 life for no reason. <laughs> yeah, that happens, Mr. Nobody. Sometimes you just... Play an extra legend. So now that I paid that two life, we have to chump block. I was planning on you know having these both be threes, and if they didn't have a gate, we'd get to have six. But I mean, they have a million cards in hand. Um, I win a lot more prizes by doing these events, uh, like where they have entry fees, and entry fees and payouts, just get more prizes, and the setup is good for streaming, it's better entertainment in my opinion. I do ranked best of three sometimes, we did earlier with the band Flash, we did Ranked best of three in that. All right, well, we can block this gate, gatebreaker ram here. Our opponent has nine cards. Sheep too strong. I don't think our opponent should be making this attack. Um, their Gatebreaker Ram is just so much more valuable than my Incubation Druid. That's just not a good trade. It doesn't really matter too much. You know, it doesn't really matter with them having a million cards in hand. But that's just not an attack they need to make. Their ram also just only grows every single turn. It just, just gets bigger and bigger. Um, this is going to be tough for us to win. This is going to be tough. So I need a Reclamation Sage. Guild Summit. And Negates. Um, I guess Vivian's. This one just don't think this one's gonna go too well for us. I 
I guess to be fair, we were on a seven card hand there. All right, I'm going to cut one of these sixes or sevens. I'm not sure which one, though. Which one of these is the worst? Dream Eater, Ravager Worm, or Palaka Worm? I guess I can, cut a, I can cut a Siege Gang, actually. I'll just do that. We still have three fives. I'll do that. Siege Gang's not very good against all these Gates of Blazes our opponent has. Yeah, I was really worried about... Yeah, Palaka Worm... I don't know. Yeah, by the time we actually play it, it's very unlikely that we're going to be winning. You know, I can see it kind of stabilizing and, like, being able to, you know, team up with other things to take down their big creatures kind of kind of stuff, but... Or it's, you know, good against, like, Gates of Blaze because it's, you know, really hard to kill at seven gates or even if they have seven gates, it draws us a card. But it's like, what, what game are we playing? It's hard to imagine a game that we're playing that we're not going to win with Palaka without Palaka Worm, but like with Palaka Worm, it turns the tide and then we win kind of thing. <clears throat> if I play another Incubation Druid here and they just go Gates of Blaze, I'm like really dead. So that's why I didn't do that. And now that we have Negate, I'm not gonna just throw down a Biogenic Ooze without having Negate back up. So we'll have negate for a gates of blaze, and then I think just kind of every turn I can just make <clears throat> make some more oozes. I don't know. It's gonna be tough. Gotta be to five five. Yeah, Planeswalkers are, are definitely good against uh, Gates decks. I'm not sure why Autotap prioritizes Druid so much. I guess because Druid um, is like singular color and these are dual colored. Uh, I know it's, I mean, it's technically it's three colors, but whenever it adds man, it's 
I guess that's that's a bad argument because when these adds mana, they're one. So I don't I don't know why it, it always wants to tap Druid so much. I'm not sure. So at least this guild summit's only going to be divination. <laughs> That's still divination and make us use a Rex Age. I mean, they just never mind. It's draw three. <laughs> that card's good. We get Gatebreaker Ram out of here. We have to use like so many resources just to get like their three drop creature and their three mana draw three. So they're still with five cards in hand and a whole lot of lands on the battlefield. Now six cards, of course, after the draw step. Okay. That is really good for us. They didn't have anything to follow up with. That's really good for us. So I want to go haste Phoenix right now. No. Haste Phoenix only deals them one extra damage because I tap my incubation druid. Um, but without casting it. Wow. So without casting, I cut the two mana for Siege Gang Commander. Uh, that's awkward. Hoping at least we get three basic lands. And they have Settle also. Pretty sure the opponent just drawing four cards would be better than Conclave Tribunaling my. That thing. They could have just drawn four cards instead. I think that's what they should have done. It's not going to really matter though. Every land they draw is a redraw. <laughs> All right. Garrison Sergeant. 3-3 three, three, double strike.
I need to mirror image the Phoenix first. Kind of got fortunate there. Because if they would have just blocked, then I wouldn't have had a Phoenix to mirror image. At least it's, it looks like at least it looks like it's not settled. Okay, that's good. Stop tapping the druid. Well, that O one. So that O1 was not coming back, because mirror, mirror Image is not a Rekindling Phoenix. We don't have any Rekindling Phoenixes in the graveyard. So that, that O1 wasn't doing anything. Alright, Rekindling Phoenixes. Need your help here. Blocking the mirror image made a lot of sense because because it wasn't going to come back, so that that was a that was a good block. But you, then they used the bounce spell on the O1 token, which the O1 token didn't do anything. Like if they wanted to use a bounce spell on a token, they could have bounced the ooze token. There's no reason to bounce it. Unless they just want to cycle their card. You know, because it was the... The Into the Royal, uh, Blink of an Eye. That, uh, just cycles. But yeah, the game's over. I don't think we can win anymore. Pretty dead. And it's sad. The Vanifar just has a jump block also. I don't have anything. <clears throat> gates, the gates decks are just really, really powerful. Surprising, you know. We didn't think anything of Guild Summit, um, you know, last last set, but it is pretty surprising how good those decks are. So I liked what we had going on. This is this is a fun deck to play when we were doing our thing. Um, mirror image was really cool. I liked this addition to the deck. Um, I don't know if there's anything better than Palak Worm. There's probably not. Siege Gang, 
was I guess we used it we did use it one time. It was really important one time on like the Zagana. I could see like one I think I'd want one Siege Gang and three Biogenicus because Biogenicus just work so well together when you can just kind of pair them up and like it's really good to like Phoenix into Biogenicus and stuff like that. Uh, Sailor Means is mostly against aggro, but you know we didn't play a whole lot of aggro. Problems we just don't we don't have ways to stop like those control decks from going. You know like we basically just lost to to, to two control decks. We just can't stop all their sweepers and stuff. We can't stop settles and and everything like that. Um, I could see having a lot more counter magic than what's in here in the sideboard, maybe, or just like. I, w I wish you could go get Frilled Mystics, but you can only do this anytime you could do a sorcery. But maybe maybe Frilled Mystics in the sideboard that you, you Frilled Mystic to counter something and then you Vanifar away the Frilled Mystic into something else. Uh, maybe something like that. Um, I could honestly see Squee the Immortal Sun. Yes, Squee actually, or not, he's whatever, Squee the Immortal, not Sun, but just Squee the Immortal. I could see that over a Sailor Means that you can keep sacking Squee for more Phoenixes and just recasting Squee. I can certainly see that. But it was pretty fun. I liked the Rhythm of the Wilds. So I really liked Rhythm, Vanifar, Phoenix, Ooze, Mirror Image. Really liked that stuff. Um, but we just couldn't go bigger. Maybe, maybe honestly, sideboard, like, Hydroid Crisis is. I know they don't really work to, to, to Vanifar into, but maybe, like, against the decks, like, the Heavy Wrath decks, that Vanifar doesn't really do, do very much because, you know, all the sweepers that they have. Maybe you just replace Vanif Vanifar with Hydroid Crisis. Maybe that's a maybe that's an option. I don't know. I don't know. But there we go. So that's Teamer Vanifar. Had some fun games, especially that second match. Had a, like three really good games there. Um, oh yeah, Moldrotha is awesome. No, we don't we don't interact. And so the decks that just have a bunch of sweepers, they just killed us. And so we played two decks like that with a lot of sweepers, and we died. So that's how it is. All right. Um, so if you're watching this later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are under 100 YouTube subs now until uh, a 20 or sorry, a 12 hour stream. Uh, going to be doing that to celebrate uh, 1500 YouTube subscribers, which we are um, currently under 100 now to get to. So um, if you're here in chat, you can find the YouTube channel right there. Just put the link there, youtube.com slash C slash Todd Stevens MTG. Uh, but that's going to be it for Teamer Vanifar, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.